My time has come. I've been working towards this moment for a long time and now it has begun for me. The Threadripper era. Yes, my friends, I reached deep into my pocket, very deep actually, and got myself one of AMD's newly released Threadripper high-end CPUs of the 3000 series. But not out of megalomaniac reasons or the likes. No, I bought it for my video production. So today I'm going to take you behind the scenes a little bit and talk about how much and what kind of work actually is behind each and every video I put out and how long each step takes me. While I certainly would have preferred to go for the 32 core by AMD, honestly I couldn't afford that one. So it is the Ryzen Threadripper 3960X, equipped with 24 cores and a whopping 48 threads. At the time of this video such a CPU costs about 1500 US dollars. Of course we're not done with a CPU alone. There's still a TRX40 motherboard needed with the new socket STRX4 and obviously quad channel memory can't be missing either. So you see this was one hell of a huge investment for me but I'm sure in the long term it will help me with my workflow since right now my current video editing or rather workstation PC is holding me back big time. For all of you that aren't aware, I've been working with the Intel Core i9-9900K 8-core for the entire year so far and I'm really pushing it to its limits. While in the meantime I did have the option to upgrade to the more powerful Ryzen 9 3900X with 12 cores, there were a few reasons why I didn't. First of all, I didn't have the time to build and configure everything. Secondly, probably the more important reason, while such a 12-core offers a lot more performance than an 8 core does, I still had to observe for the tasks I need a CPU for, it still would be sweating. Now I can't tell you how well a 16 core such as the 3950X would do, since right now I still haven't got the chance to get a hold on one yet and test it. How much of a time saving is there actually in it for me by going for this huge upgrade and what would change in my video production? And would such a step be the right one for you guys as well if the raw performance of your mainstream stream CPU just doesn't cut it for your workloads. At this point I'd like to thank the German PC hardware shop called Equipper, especially the very friendly and helpful Jorgios. Hopefully I pronounced that name correctly. Either way he really fought in order to get me that Threadripper and he did manage to get one extremely early for me. And on top of that he gave me a bit of a discount on motherboard and processor. I really appreciate that. Now that's not meant to be an ad or something, but if you're European or more specifically are in Germany. I I can really recommend shopping at Equipper. I'm a customer for the last couple of months now. And it was Andy from the Facebook group named PC Hardware Community that led me to that online shop. Greetings to you Andy. But now back to the CPU. At least when already spending this much money we get a pretty neat spectacular unboxing experience. It is quite obvious this is a premium product. As expected from a processor sporting a TDP of a whopping 280 watts, there's no cooling solution included anymore. For the installation as we are used to with Threadripper, we get the Torx screwdriver as well as this all-in-one liquid cooling mounting ring for Aztec water blocks. So we already do see AMD kinda lets us know by now this beast is best cooled with a liquid cooler. Which is why I'm going for the fractal design Celsius S36 in its blackout version. And since some will ask that question, yes even though these new Threadripper 3000 processors do require a new socket, the mounting holes as seen on TR4 with the first and second gen Threadripper remain the same. Meaning we can keep using our cooling solution as long as it's compatible with TR4 in the first place. And as you may imagine, such a new motherboard isn't exactly cheap. Compared to older X399 boards for older Threadripper models, such a motherboard sporting the new so-called TRX40 chipset comes in at quite a bit more. Similar as it's the case with pricing seen with X470 to X570 of the mainstream lineup. Such a ASRock TRX40 Tai Chi that I have here right now after all would cost you $500 or more. But there are even more expensive options out there. What I immediately liked seeing on this board is the fact that ASRock apparently learned from their past mistakes they made with their 
X570 line of boards. The chipset fan now is bigger, meaning it's not as noisy anymore, and was repositioned in order for the graphics card not to block off the airflow. And a fantastic addition, in my opinion, is the fact the fan, or rather fans, yes, the MOSFETs are being cooled by two mini fans, all the fans can be set to a silent profile in the BIOS, which turns them off. So we are basically talking of semi passive cooling here. I love that. The three fans on this board therefore appear to be quieter to me than a single one was on the X570 motherboards by ASRock. Now even though the older TR4 and newer STRX4 sockets appear to be close to identical, I have to say there's no compatibility between the two. Neither can you install a newer 3000 series Threadripper into a TR4 socket, nor can you put an older 1st or 2nd gen Threadripper into the new STRX4 socket. Such a Threadripper 3960X is put together by a total of 4 6-core CC CDs, 7 nanometer process by TSMC, and the I.O. die is by Global Founders, the 12 nanometer process. In total, we have 88 PCIe 4.0 lanes available. Of course, some of it goes to the chipset and so on. So what's left for us to use effectively are 72 lanes. Should I be mistaken, in a worst case scenario, it's 64. For instance, with a Ryzen 9 3950X, which I don't own yet, we only get 24 or rather 20 lanes effectively. Even though we are talking of 24 cores here, the clock speeds, on paper at least, still look pretty darn good with a base clock of 3.8 GHz and a max boost clock of 4.5 GHz. No matter if you take a look at the TDP, the cache or max memory capacity, these numbers seem huge for a high-end desktop CPU. Of course I wanted to check out what kind of clock speeds I get out of the box with this 3960X. With all cores at full load, we are pretty much looking at a guaranteed 4025 to 4050 megahertz. The max achievable boost clock on a single core, just like AMD states, is in fact exactly 4.5 gigahertz. Alright, I've said enough now, now it's time to run some benchmarks. But I do have to interrupt again and let you know, my standardized test runs weren't exactly meant for such powerhouses of workstation CPUs, meaning there certainly are quite a few application tests missing. I mean applications that you'd normally put so many cores to good use. But then again, I didn't expect I would be making a move to the Threadripper platform anytime soon. But oh well, now here are the test results.
you go. Those that mainly benefit from very high multi-core performance in applications, just like me, will be blown away by the sheer amount of raw performance the CPU brings to the table. And then again, we need to keep in mind, today's 24 core is just the tip of the iceberg. AMD already has a 32 core out and plans on soon rolling out a 64 core Threadripper. Of course, I have to admit at this point, my tests are pretty much incomplete. For one, the competition's counterpart is missing, that would more or less be the Core i9 10980XE 18 core, even though it can't really compete, but I honestly couldn't afford just buying that one along with a suitable motherboard for the sake of this review. Secondly, the gap between AMD's 12 and 24 core CPUs and my charts are yet to be filled out. While I would have loved to include the Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core in this test, availability is still scarce and I haven't gotten my hands on one yet. But no worries, I definitely have plans on testing that 3950X. Once I manage to get one, I'll take care of the test. But one thing I'd like to let you know about fairly early into this conclusion is, if you're a gamer and plan on purchasing such a beast of a CPU with over 16 cores, you probably shouldn't do that. Many cores are great for multi-threaded workloads, where those many cores and threads can actually be put to good use, but with games, there's always the issue with optimization. So yes, most games will run, and some you'll even get really good results with 24 cores, but in others the frame rate will greatly suffer. In affected games such as Far Cry 5, in my case for instance, there's only one word to describe the experience, micro stuttering. But oh well, to be honest, this really didn't come unexpected to me. As I've already said in the beginning of this video after all, I haven't purchased this beast of a processor for gaming, that would be a total waste of money, I bought it for my video production. How much faster is such a 3960X for me then compared to the 9900K that I've been using for like a whole year now or so? If we take a look at the multi-core and especially rendering results, there are huge differences noticeable, but the time savings to some at least probably don't seem to be that big of a deal at first glance. This of course also is due to the fact that I use relatively short and simple projects for rendering, so testing doesn't take too long for me while still getting some conclusive results out of the test run. A 4K video usually doesn't only take me 7 minutes to render out with my i9-9900K, it's more like 30 to 60 minutes per video, so I certainly would already be saving some time there with the Threadripper. But if it were just for this rather low time gain, to be honest, I wouldn't have gotten myself such an expensive Threadripper. Now what steps are actually needed to get one of my videos produced? The first thing happening mostly is me filming the product, getting some b-roll. This can take somewhere between one and a half to three hours, depending on the product. Next up on the list is writing the script. As you may or may not know, I'm multilingual and produce my videos in two different languages. If things are going fast, the original script, along with the translation of it, is done within three to four hours. If it's a more demanding script, such as today's for instance, it takes about six to eight hours. Then it's time for me to do the voiceover. Since I consider myself to be a pretty sloppy speaker, I take way too long for that, and I have to keep repeating sentences many times until all sounds about right. Right. Depending on the video, this can take somewhere in between 30 to 80 minutes. The freshly recorded voiceover then needs to be polished. Basically, I have to cut out all the mistakes I made and glue it all together as best as I can. On average, this eats up 1 to 2 hours. While I do all that, my shaky video recordings are already being stabilized by software. And this step is very much necessary, since I own a camera without any image stabilization whatsoever. Depending on the video, I'm working with 40 to 70 gigabytes worth of video files, these need to be stabilized, which takes about 5 to 10 hours with my 9900K. The CPU therefore is at a 100% load for hours and hours, meaning I am somewhat limited on possibilities on how I could fill the gap in between more productively. I basically have to wait for the stabilization process to finish until I can move on. So you see, let's pretend I'm not 3 times as fast with the Threadripper 
3960X instead only twice as fast with stabilization, that would mean 10 hours at max would quickly turn into just 5. In the best case scenario I'm 3 times as fast and would therefore only have to wait slightly over 3 hours. That would save me a ton of time, time that I could either use to produce more content or just take some time off and relax, since free time right now I basically have none. So this in some way additionally can be seen as an investment in health too. Don't get me wrong, I love making videos, but sometimes you even need a break from things you love. The power consumption of course isn't exactly low, especially when at idle, but if you are considering the time savings that followed, I am even working more efficiently with the 3960X as opposed to my current i9 and the 900K, since the task gets completed in a much shorter amount of time. All in all I am very happy with the performance the 3960X delivers and I can't wait to finally build my new workstation PC. I have that planned sometime in January 2020. While the pricing may appear quite steep, I find the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3960X with its 24 cores to still be a great deal for content creators that actually make money producing content. The perfect overall package considering price, performance and gaming however would probably turn out to be the Ryzen 9 3900X and or 3950X. Today's Threadripper in my opinion certainly does does deserve my gold award, but it definitely isn't a CPU made for everyone. With that being said, I hope you found these behind the scenes of my world somewhat interesting and as always, thanks a lot for sticking around for so long.